All right, so we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, any anything needs to be corrected or amended to the agenda? If not, just need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Eyes and hand raise, raisers have it. Mm -hmm. And we have no appointments this evening, so we will jump right into public comment. So if there's anything that anybody has that's not part of the agenda this evening, now is the time. I only see Paul and Owen online and Dave in person, so. Um, noticing on my hill there's some trees that are going to be in the road. Sometime a little rain or a little wind. I'm wondering if we want to get our tree ward and somebody take a look at them and maybe cut them down before we have to go out in the middle of the night and cut them out. Yeah. We don't need the tree warden. Um, that's only if they're like shade trees. So where, whose house are they near? It's down below my house. There's a, it was a dead tree like this. It's now out over the road like this. So okay. it's not long and it's going to be down in the road. So it's between you and whom? It's between, so actually kind of it's the driveway below me, which is uh, um, Joe Net Netzel and Rebecca something, I can't say her name. You said Joe Netzel? Yeah, Net uh -huh. N-E-T-S-Z-A-L, Z-E-L. Right okay. Just as you go around the corner for that field, it's right there on the left, and it's coming out in the road pretty good. And All right, hang over. Well, I'll let them know. I know they're... Um, Things keep being as saturated as they are. Mm -hmm. They'll end up falling down here shortly. Yeah. So I know this week... They, um, I think that they're going to go get that temporary bridge because they have to go get it. So they're going to go get it. And I'm not sure if they're working with Sven Scribner to set it up this week or if they're setting it up next week. But I know they're going to go okay. get it. And, um, but anyways, I'll, I'll tell Morgan. Yeah, so that thank one you. one on Camperk Road that Joe mentioned last week. Yep, Morgan already checked it out. He said he's aware of it. It's totally fine. Like, it's rooted. He's like, it's just growing that way for sun. And he's like, it's not... It's not dead. It's not an issue. So Morgan said he. So he looked at. He knew exactly what he. I was talking about. Okay. So I'm like, Perfect. okay. This one has been dead for a while. And just. <clears throat> All right. I'll make creeping this dead. Yeah. All right. They can chop it down. All right. Anything else? Public comment. Hearing none. We'll move forward doesn't mean that somebody can't comment at some point. We're usually pretty good about that here. <laughs> um, so we have a whole bunch of licenses, renewals. So the funny, you just get that one page now mm. off from the internet. So I did, Pam, um, you can see I wrote in like Tessie's Tavern mm. outside consumption permit. So I did write in their hours. Mm -hmm. on there and I crossed off one we didn't need and we had a new one on here so I put that as a separate motion um, the others are obviously all um, renewals and I think the only one that we oh, had I, I keep, it's like a zen bell or something um, <laughs> namaste <laughs> and I know we probably already talked about this last year when we approved it but I know in the past we had some issues with the outside Consumption permit at Tessie's with some noise. We haven't in, well, in it's more the specifically five years like I've been Sundays. Here. Wasn't it like Paul? Wasn't it like a Sunday or something that people were complaining about the noise Sunday evening or? Well, back in the beginning when they first set yeah. up that outside um, little sitting area, there there was questions about lighting and there was questions about noise from the from the adjoining neighbor there. Uh, but it seems to have been resolved. They went back to the DRB. The DRB told them to make sure they had downlight, <clears throat> down lighting. And um, so I haven't heard anything about um, problems with the noise in the past few years. Of course, they've had change in ownership too. So they haven't been open a whole lot. Right. Yeah. No, I haven't heard anything in the last few years either. So I'd, just so probably just yeah. something to keep an eye on. That's oh all. yeah, yeah. So I just had a question about if they need an outside consumption. Does Babes need an outside consumption too, or is that part of the? Is considered to be connected to the building, or how does that work? Maybe Owen can answer that question. Yeah. 
There he is. Hi. Um, hi. hi, everybody. Um, we should have put in a renewal for our outside consumption permit. Was that not included in our last month's application? No, it wasn't included. I'm looking at, let me look at the list. No, it says, <clears throat> let's so, see. Is that the complete list of all? Oh, wait a second. No. I, you know what? I don't know. This is not the complete list. I think we already gave them. I one. think there, you did last month. I don't have last uh, month's yeah. with me, Paul. I only have the list that Pam gave me of the mm. current ones. So I don't remember if Babe's outside consumption permit was part. Well, did you, she mail it to yeah. yet or did you download it? We just did a one and a three for them. A one and a three, but for some reason I thought we did a outside. Did you have a separate outside consumption permit, Owen? We do. We have one for the back patio. Then you might want it to take a look because if the past minutes only said that, then it you might want it. You're just, you know what, give Pam a buzz in the morning because she can look you right up on the DLC website and see yeah, maybe correct. it's this whole new system and Pam says it's kind of clumsy. It's um, been so funky and we yeah. didn't, it's been really funky to get over to the online system. Um, but we should have had it in there. If we Whoops, didn't. you just went, we can't hear you now. Oh, no, I think it's on our end. Oh, maybe, hang on. I think it's us. Oh, <laughs> oh whoops, hang on. I can hear Sorry, you. Owen, it's us, not you. It's okay. Uh, the minutes of last month say that Dave Barr had a first and third class. Yep. Renewed. That's what, yep, that's what Paul said. Okay, so can you hear me now? Still can't hear you. It's, he's working on it. It should work now. Yep. Yeah. So you know what? Just give Pam a call. Or if you're headed into work, you could send her an email. She's Bethel Town Clerk at Comcast.net. And she can look because she has said it's a very clumsy system. So you're definitely going to want to um, deal with that. However, that being said, <clears throat> if, if um, Owen needs an outside consumption permit renewal he would want it renewed at this meeting because otherwise he cannot use his back patio until after we meet again can we just um mm. can we just um not having a formal application in front of us can we give him a yeah a motion contingent upon yeah, contingent, contingent yeah. upon him. Yeah, yeah, contingent upon Owen um, working out the logistics with DLC and paying Pam. Yeah, because okay. otherwise you wouldn't be able to use a patio, and we don't want to do that to you. Right. You could yeah. get a nice day here. Yes. Yeah. So what are your hours? Yeah, what are your hours, Owen, for your? Um, we're work. open um, from no? two. Two to ten Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday, and then two to midnight on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All right, Thursday, Friday, but your outside consumption permit, um, you didn't permit till midnight, did you? Didn't you just permit to like? I think we permitted you... until eleven p.m. I'm pretty sure um, on That's... the weekends, and this is right. off of my memory, but um, it would it would be good to do it until midnight because um, we are open until midnight. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two to midnight, and then you're two to 10, Tuesday and Wednesday? Sunday. Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to take notes. So you're closed on Monday. We are, yeah. Okay, so you would want your outside consumption permit for those hours on those days? Yes. Yep. So we could just we could just do one motion that yeah. takes care of all the ones we have in front of us, and then we could do a separate motion for babes, yep. just to have totally, it in case yeah. they need it, and mm -hmm. that way it doesn't hold them up. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So I, um, unless anybody has anything further, I'd entertain a motion to ex uh, approve the first class license for Ollie Fisher LLC, first class license for the Creek House Diner. First class, third class, and outside consumption permit for Tessie's Tavern. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? 
All right. All right. And then I would entertain a motion uh, contingent upon Babe's Bar um, filling out all the appropriate um, license agreements with the state. Yep. Um, do we need any parameters on that? For outside consumption, consumption yeah. Yeah. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, there, done. Yeah, so you can, you're welcome. Yeah, so you'll just square it away with her, with Pam. She's the, she's the one. Mm. Yeah, thanks for Paul. Otherwise, I only get what I get from Pam. I don't, uh, so it's a good thing Paul's on it. Yes, thank you, Paul. <laughs> so the next one, Vermont Mobile Spirits, is different. So Pam and I discussed this, and Pam called the liquor control. They're using the kitchen at one of um, Kevin Barry's building. Sorry for their kitchen. So we were talking about it because it's interesting. So they're gonna they need approval mm -hmm. for a first and third class liquor license. But then if they're going to go and cater events, they still have to get a separate catering permit. So I don't know if that's a change in the DLC law or what. It was interesting. She, Pam called liquor control because it was not something we'd seen before because mm. they're not serving alcohol there. She's just using the kitchen. So it was an interesting. So I assume they just changed the laws. So that's why um, I did it as a separate because it's not a renewal. Okay, so we just need a motion to approve Vermont Mobile Spirits LLC's first and third class liquor license. Uh, question first, if they're not gonna serve alcohol there, why, why are we involved with any kind of liquor license? Because it's a first class commercial caterer and a third class commercial kitchen license again i don't know we you know like i said pam called liquor control because we'd never seen this before and they said that yes the select board does have to approve them yes they have to get these liquor licenses but then they still have to do their cater their permitting mm -hmm. if they were to cater so it is unusual dave i'm assuming that they change the law you're huh? not, not going to use it, but we want your money. It's a money. extra fees. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, so it's a yeah, they're um, first class and third class commercial catering licenses. Mm -hmm. So um, okay, I think did we have we had a motion on the table, right? No. Yep. Oh, yep. did we? Yeah. No, I just I okay. interrupted. Okay. So we have motion seconded. I'll second. If it okay. I'm sure someone. Okay, all in favor? Who made the motion? I did. Oh, I was like, I'm confused. He can't, he can't do that, can he? Well, he made a second. Dave no, I second. made the motion. Oh, you made yeah. the motion. Oh, I, yeah, I was confused myself. Yeah, I'm just throwing curveballs here. I, I don't, like, normally what? don't make the motions, I just entertain a motion. <laughs> I just figure we get the ball rolling here. Yeah. 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 We got to we got to keep the car on our toes. What we need at select board meetings oh, is entertainment. And, uh, yeah. Owen has raised his hand, so he has a question. Oh yeah, I was just wondering um, if you do, if you are approving a first and third class license, does that mean even though they're not intending to, would they be able to serve out of the premises? You would have to ask. Um, Pam, but I can tell you this, here's the difference. Say Tessie's Tavern, if they, theirs is written as a first class restaurant bar license, this one is written as a first class commercial caterer and third class commercial kitchen. So I'm assuming that the answer is, is no because their application titles are different. Um, so, but Pam is the one who called liquor control. So I would say no, Owen, they, they only have a little kitchen. They do very little prep there. So Pam had said they weren't gonna be serving alcohol um, there. They, they just use his kitchen. So yours is a first class restaurant bar license. Theirs is not. So it's a different type of license. Is that just because they might store alcohol maybe, there? Or maybe they maybe they store alcohol there. I don't mm. know. I like I said, Pam called them because I said, "Are you <clears throat> sure that the select board needs to approve this?" And she said, "Yes." But you can, you know, when you square away your outside consumption permit with Pam, just ask her, Owen. She'll give you the scoop because she's the one who talked to them. <clears throat>
Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I had the same question. Well, yeah, that's that's why first class commercial caterer. So they're getting different license is. The state's just looking for some extra revenue. Yep, yeah, could be. Uh, okay. Any further questions in regards to the liquor licenses? Okay, we'll move forward with the local emergency management plan adoption. So that's something that we adopt annually. It has to be to our regional planning commission by <coughs> MA. And so really it's the same as we've done every year. You know, we go through it, and as I said in my notes, I read it, Kelly, Dave Algegetti, I had Richard Manning read it this year, and then we sent it to the new assistant fire chief, Greg Timmons, and so we all kind of go through and make sure that the contact information is updated um, for the contact list. The interesting thing is it's not a public document, so we don't put it in the select board packet because it gives out a lot of phone numbers mm -hmm. and a lot of information. But I have a copy of it, obviously, the fire chief, the, you know, people that need them have copies, so. Um, but anyway, so that's why it's not in your packet. So it was really just a cursory update updating school information and um, the different things like that. So no big changes. Okay, so I just need a motion to authorize myself to sign the municipal adoption form. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. This so-called form that we haven't seen yeah. that we're just assuming no, is correct. No, you form. You get the get form. That on, get that on the uh, yeah. minutes. I did put this in here this time, this required elements, just kind of for my own education <coughs> to know which sections it was in. But yeah, it is weird. Okay. All right. And we had a resignation from the Energy Committee. That, uh, Chris Scheffler. Yeah, unfortunately. Do they have a potential re, uh, uh, replacement no. for no. Chris? Or no, too bad. No, Not I'm yet, hoping, because right now it's, yeah, it's Nicole, Vincent, Bergamo. Do they still have two individuals Scott from Putney. No, he's, Worldton? Nope. It's just Scott Putney, Nicole, and Vincent hmm. Bergamo. I mean, they had two people from Royalton they at one did, point, right? But they, that were yeah, they non did. Non voting members or whatever? Yep. They're gone. Hmm. Law school students. Does, and does Randolph have an energy committee? I believe so. But they, they don't anymore? Or, or you don't know? I'm just wondering, remember how we talked before how, well, I think that's, you know, a lot of towns don't have an energy committee, so maybe there's an opportunity, I'll make it up, that somebody from Rochester could join. Well, I think that's why she, part locally. of the reason she's trying to get these people together, these mm. towns, about when she came to last meeting, so that let's see what everybody's doing and, mm. and talk about regional, because, yeah, some towns just... Because I know Royalty didn't have one. my it. understanding that the town of Randolph mm -hmm. just got rid of its energy committee. Or it just went inactive? Oh, no, it oh, didn't go oh, inactive. It was too active. Oh. Oh. <laughs> they well, kept asking the select board to do stuff. Oh. Maybe there's, um... Huh. <laughs> we will make no comment on that. <laughs> they got their own town to run. I don't know. I hadn't heard. There's no reason to get rid of them. Just say no. You don't want them to do it. Or, or you That's, can. They might come up with a good idea. Maybe or the select board. board idea you could jump Maybe there was more to it than right. that. Yeah. You know, or the select board court could direct them in a direction that they wanted to see gone. In. You know what I mean? Like. But, I don't. I mean, this might be. I don't know. Put feelers out again. Yeah. I guess. Well, she has been, and I'm hoping that once the once the people get together for the that she talked about getting these town groups together, these other towns, that that might help. Is especially now. That, I mean, thank goodness she got that grant for the labor, um, because just three people is difficult. Hmm. So we'll see. Hopefully, people are out there. Well, at the planning commission <coughs> meeting at the public hearing, Jean was there and, and I told everybody, didn't I? I said, there is, there is a place for you. We will find a committee for you. Mm. And, yeah. Yeah, so, um, as we'll have to see. But anyway, so Chris um, had new commitments, so he had to resign, unfortunately, so. Okay. 
if someone wants to read a, a good article on energy, you should read the um, article on Digger today from uh, the western part of the state. That huge farm is putting in a two million gallon digester. They're yep. going to make up make meth enough methane to equal 860,000 gallons of gasoline. And they're going to pipe it all into Vermont gas pipelines. Hmm. No kidding. Why did VTC's digester go offline? Gasoline? Compared with, with, with the energy, you could compare the amount of energy you could get out of 80, 860,000 gallons of gasoline, you're going to be able to get that same amount of energy out of this digester. Wow. Hmm. I know one of the farms in um, Addison County had it put in a digester, but why did VTC's digester? I don't think it was big enough. I don't think it was big enough to do the, co the cost of operating and to keep it going. There wasn't enough output. Wow. I mean, we're talking about a 2.5 million gallon digester. Wow. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. I'll have to read that. I'm the not digger. All right, make a note. That's, that's interesting. All right, just need a motion to accept Chris Scheffler's um, resignation the Energy Committee. Move to accept with regret. And if we, and if we don't accept, then he's still on, right? Right, yeah, we <laughs> that, that works? <laughs> <laughs> Sign you up another year. That's right. Okay. Seconded. Nobody. Gene just raised his Who seat. moved it? You moved it? Dave, Dave moved it. Oh, no, Dave, Dave moved it? Yeah. Gene seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Paul, what are you up to? You want to be on the energy committee? Uh, no, no, I'm trying to get him on the planning commission. You just leave him alone. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all right. We don't need to hear you. We'll just make the motion. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? No. Yeah. Great. So. We're gonna try to put him on the on the planning commission. Ah. I'm working on. All right, and then we had the. Um, the we had the fair and impartial policing policy that was part of the Vermont Criminal Justice mm -hmm. Training Council. Yeah, so this is just a. Read that? Mm -hmm. This? Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, just. Okay. I know. Well, what happens is we have several. We have this one, we have the body camera, we have the um, uh, use of force. So I think we had four. And what's interesting is they're pretty much all dictated by the state now. So you just go to the Criminal Justice Training Council and mm. you print theirs out. But I had was reading about it and I had um, somehow, I saw a link to Winooski's and I, and I really liked Winooski's in a way because they had worked with it. Um, immigrant population and I felt like some of it just dialed back some of the language because yes the police officers like Chris is saying you could do this you could do that and but some of it was just I think made it kind of a briefer statement um, obviously we're not right near the border and we have other fish to fry we don't I think we're just focusing on issuing whatever I don't think that the fact that they may be illegal immigrant is just not the issue that you know, we want Oscar or Justin kind of focusing on, but all of the language is very, um, you know, it all comes from there. And there was a couple that I'd read and I was, everybody would read it like officer in charge. I just put Vermont State Police. So there was a couple things. And then I would white out sections and just said C-section, the section below, because a lot of it was just um, redundant and just kept saying it over and over again. But. I wasn't sure. The only real change I had made was this one where they have the whole federal criminal border crossing and they have this whole spiel. And then I liked Winooski's. I thought it was simple language where they just said, um, agency members shall not make warrantless arrests or detain individuals on suspicion of unlawful entry unless the suspect is apprehended in the process of entering the U.S. without inspection. Obviously, we're not right near the border. Um, I mean, Winooski is a little bit farther away, but I just felt like it kind of took out some of this other language, but it's just an option, and that's where I got it. Um, 
the other changes, well, actually there, um, that was it. I think, oh, I chose, uh, I changed a wording at the very end. Yeah, removal grant. Yeah, shall not propose, Grant just said, shall not grant ICE or CBB agents access to individuals in the agency's custody. So there's not a lot of changes, but this is where it comes from, so. But this applies to our council. Yep, applies to Oscar But it does Justin. not apply to a sheriff or the highway patrol if they're in Bethel. Nope, nope, their agency they, most. They're, they have their own power. Yeah. Okay. Well, and this and one here, this one is the same thing that the state police have. Exactly, so this yeah. Is, uh, uh, this yeah. would be the same as the state police, but not necessarily the Windsor County, unless they have adopted this, yeah. which I, I don't understand. know. Yeah, you're right. I just want to clarify. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. You yeah, and I was looking at, like, this council's made up of, like, I don't know, 25, you know, um, lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a bunch of really high-ranking members that are mm -hmm. part of it. Um, yeah. All different branches of the, of the Vermont State Trooper, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a whole bunch of I th I think it makes individuals sense. in there. Mm -hmm. it, it, For the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council to do it, because you can't have every different department with a different policy. Right. I right. mean, it would seem as though the state police would kind of yeah. govern. No, I mean, not yeah. govern. You're That's stepping on a very fine line. Okay. Common sense. Well, I, I mean, not. the document <laughs> seems. <laughs> There's none here. There's none. It's all gone. It seems very. I appreciate the document. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like, I just wanted to read it to see if you had any changes. Obviously, I didn't go through and where it says member, I didn't enter Town of Bethel so yet. We're, di we're discussing only. Yeah, yep. I just wanted to see if there was changes, what you, if you wanted to make a couple changes I had, or if you don't, that's fine. And then, um, I also am not sure where I wrote, if an agency member, so Town Bethel receives a report, a potentially biased or hate-motivated incident, agency shall either dispatch an officer or for the caller to the BSP. Yeah, that makes sense. Not the officer in charge. We need someone outside. We have done that before. If we have issues, we usually go to the BSP. It just looks better. It makes sense. If you have an interagency conflict and there's only two of them, then you got to go to the BSP because you yeah. want someone impartial. You want it to be handled properly and impartially for whoever may be the supposed uh, or alleged victim to get due process right out of the gate. So. I, mean, I think the only opinion. question I had, and I briefly brought it up at the beginning of the meeting, was that there are several areas where yep. that you had shortened it or I whited did. out. I did. I just whited it out. And if you go on the website and you look at this document, it's almost like this boil, boilerplate that language is. with a um, with a statute or two it is. that's attached it's these. to us. I just don't know, like. It, it brings you back to these. Like, at the end of every paragraph, should you have that statute, or? or I didn't think so. That's or do you, you know, or do you have one little sentence somewhere that just says, it's Actually, all I think this is what same when, statute or something, but. This is what I think Winooski did, and then they did, because they kept referencing these, but I'll double check the language to see. Um, but that, I think they were just, they kept referencing this eight, um, USC 1373, 1373 and yeah. 17. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have a chance to look that up to see what. But I'll double were, check. But, I'll make a note. Um, double check. But that was the only. It's not a big deal. Main question I had. It, it's not a big deal if we need to keep them in. It was just I was trying to just make it a little more user friendly and less redundant. But double check original wording. Should we add? I like the, the removal of those two paragraphs and replacing it with a sentence. Okay. Where you did. Yeah, that's like I said, I'm not going to lie, I forgot. Right to make it game. simple, you know, if you yeah. can say it in 10 words, why use 50? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 you know, just chances are we're probably never going to have to use that paragraph oh, in know. Bethel anyways. You know what I mean? Right. So now maybe maybe closer to a border town, maybe they have to have all that because it's, and it's law I, confining in case they have to Well, what I read was they but. actually met. They had the original policy just like we did. And the Winooski actually reached out to the immigrant population and met with them and, and other people to try to, you know, figure out how to make the language a bit more user-friendly to, to immigrants so that they didn't, they wanted to be sure More that the welcoming. police, yes, that's the word, thank you, yeah, that was there. So they did have the original, the same language, and then they amended it to say this. 
Um, yeah, I want, I want, even if a person is undocumented, I want them to be able to feel free to obey our laws. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> right, don't, you know, And true. to report something if, yeah. if they're being harmed. Right. And that's... Absolutely. And I'm not sure how big of an issue is here. It was certainly a bigger issue in Addison County because we had a lot of people coming in for, you know, just doing maybe harvesting farming, apples yeah. and farming and different. And then I do know some people who own farms and they had, they could not find people to work. So they actually had, you know, brought in people through all the proper channels, but it's mostly <laughs> the one, the farmer that I knew, but others, so, I don't know. Yeah. But because without them, what would you have done? You couldn't find the labor, so. Do you have any questions, Lindley, or comments, or? All right, just wanna make sure you had volume. <laughs> all right, so I'll talk to Oscar about these changes and then put it on a future agenda. I figured I'd get your input first before I do. Yeah, no, it seemed like a pretty... Speak. So we have, the next ones we have are, we have to do use of force, uh, body cameras, mm -hmm. and I like those one more. Yeah, I think there was four of them when I was looking there on the website. There was four, yeah. I don't remember the fourth one. Now. The only two that stuck out for me was the body camera one and this one, but... Yeah, use of force. And Huh? A, a taser? Tasers. No, that wasn't one of them. I mean, that is one, but that's not the one uh, I had. I can't remember what it is. Um, anyways, so we'll, I figured it would be easier to do one at a time because they're lengthy and kind of dry. <laughs> so. All right, town manager's report. So um, there'll be an article in the Herald about the small bridge over Stoddard Brook. So we all, you know, it's, it's little, obviously. We're going to be installing a 10-foot section of a bridge. It's basically similar to exactly to what we have there now. Um, I will say that the state has been great. Uh, Sven Scribner and Chris Bump is our District 4 project manager, and he was great. I messaged him or emailed him, you know, very early on Monday morning, and uh, they've been very helpful, and they... Uh, uh, Sven said, you know, it's going to be like a Netflix charge, he said, because he's like, we don't, it's such a small, he's like, we don't even, this isn't even on our schedule. And so um, Morgan, they're borrowing a trailer from someone because they need it bigger than what they have to go and get the bridge. Sven is coming down, he's bringing all the tools, he's going to work with them to get it installed, and so, which was great. And um, then it's going to be business as usual, It'll be better than the bridge that was there. And I did speak to Chris Bump because we have a structures grant and said, look, <laughs> I've got the water project out. I'm not sure the timing that might not start in June. It might start later. And I have a deadline on my structures grant would, if necessary, can I get um, an extension? And they said, yes, because we can't obviously crow, close Sand Hill and Peavine at the same time. But we did have interesting, Morgan went out and closed it, you know, right away and, and brought in barrels. People were actually moving the barrels, driving down Peavine and crossing Jeff Townsend's land. So we finally, um, so we end up not- no, not anymore, because even once... Well, they can try. It's we probably put, pretty muddy but now. Well, we put concrete barriers on both sides of the bridge, obviously. Mm -hmm. Then we ended up having to use concrete barriers down by Peavine Park to stop people from doing that. We're like, that is private property. You can't, I don't know who just does that, but not no more. They won't. Someone impatient. Yeah, so that's what. Did still get to the, uh, or the shooting range? Yep, yep, it's past that. Okay. Um, so the bond vote passed, 117 yes, 8 no, and one blank ballot. So we had our pre-bid meeting uh, at 10 a.m. on town hall the following day, and um, we may be able to award the bid on May 10th. Uh, that depends um, on how long it takes Aldrich and Elliott to get through the bids because they're due May 2nd. Uh, this is currently a 180-day contract, so we know it's going to stop for the winter and then resume in the spring of 2024. What we don't know is the exact timing. Somebody may, we you know, sure, we'd like someone to start in June, but they may, may not be able to start till a little bit later, and obviously material ordering and when we're going to be able to get that. So exact timing is unknown yet. 
Um, so I'm going to be away Thursday through May 9th, so I'll be back that Wednesday on the 10th. Uh, Gary Kugler um, graciously has agreed to be the emergency management director because the fire chief is also away. <laughs> so usually if I'm, Dave, Dave does it, but no Dave. So Gary is doing it um, and everybody's you know well-versed in what's going on. I also have um, a couple projects. So I have mowing bids out because we didn't get any applicants for the position. So I have the bids out. Richard, since he has done that job before, is answering questions. I put his name on the bid while I'm away. So that if people have questions, they can contact him. Uh, Christian Hill project starts Wednesday. And so Chris Jarvis will be working with Morgan and AJ to oversee that. So if you have any problems, this is the guy to call Dave <laughs> right here. So while I'm away, he's going to work with them to oversee that project. Um, so I've tried to, the planning commission, we are through that process. I'm trying to make sure that if I had any project in the works that I have somebody, you know, covering it. Oh, see, he's already coming. Question. <laughs> out. The boss is here. Yeah. There's several places that are, have obviously some deep understructure problems. Are you guys going to do any of that? So it's going to come back. Some stuff, yeah. I mean, and it's like two 20 foot sections that the road just. I'm thinking there's a needs it needs a lot more drainage in that area. Well, we we did bid out 2,000 linear feet of under drain and a bunch of gravel. So once um, Pike comes in and does the reclaiming or the reclamation, which, which is Wednesday, word, which is Wednesday, and you give it like a couple of days to see. Usually, when the first day or two, there's going to be moisture that's going to come through the ground, anyways. Um, so after that, then we'll start to look to see where the the bad spots are at. And, and then it's really going to be, what can we do that's reasonable? Mm -hmm. So, um, and we have, or are we, um, and Gilman's contract, he's got, you know, uh, enough quantities that we can substitute one for another when we start going through there. I think, I think the biggest <clears throat> issues that they had last time, one was some of the drainage wasn't improved, but two, the, the, it's lacking a lot of stone base structure to the road. And when you get those really heavy trucks going up down there, so that's why we Big. we have a lot of a lot more money in there this time to do <clears throat> um, almost but six inches of gravel across the whole mm -hmm. road uniformly, um, as well as a, a thicker pavement structure. And then we do have monies in there to do um, um, some drainage, normal drainage, like excavation type drainage. And we also do have some um, some under drain. Yeah. quantities that we put in there in case you we run into any spring areas or any of those. Heavy truck lane is the one that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and there might be some areas where where there's a problem area and we go, we uh, exploratory dig it and find that there's ledge there and there's nothing we do. It just becomes a move yeah. to the next one, you know. But we're, we'll try to improve it the best that we can so that hopefully this time around that road will last a lot longer than it did this time around. Yeah, so the plan is so. to box out some of the to see what's under there yeah and, or if we, we get a clay area we might yeah. just rip it out and put some new stuff in there and we do think well and there was an interesting part because it made me think about ledge because we have a water line there and so richard had been out and mm. uh, he and aaron perez are going back out tomorrow to look at it because i have this real pet peeve about if we dig this up and then we do a waterline project in a few years. And I look like a buffoon because I didn't, you know, figure this out. So I said to Richard, you know, we got to find the waterline. Can I, is there a place where we can, you know, cut, put a sleeve, put a under sleeve it or something. in or put, you know, and well, I guess, you know, the waterline runs like this and up the ditch course. And it, it's just, it's so, just so no. much. <laughs> so no, because uh, I was like Richard. And, but anyway, so with oh, it, just find, just get across the road, and then when you put in the new line, rip out that crooked. Well, shit. that's what I asked <laughs> Richard. I'm like, can't we just cut and discontinue? And he was going to mark it for me so I can see it because he's like, not really, because if you get over in the ditch line, then that's where the water line is. He said, I can see why they ran it where they ran it because if you get out, then you're not going to have as much material covering it. But one of the things that Aaron Perez is going to do tomorrow is 
was to figure out the depth. And interestingly enough, on one part of the road, when he found the water line, there's, it's about four, four and a half feet deep. And then as it goes, it gets deeper. So it does yeah. make you wonder if there's some ledge right there. So we did I'm talk sure there's about ledge it. going up through there, that's for sure. Yeah, so it, it'll be interesting to see you know, what's on there. And I did reach out yeah. to um, the quarry and let them know. You know, obviously it's going to so, be one lane. But, but it is spec to take, to handle those trucks. Right. Well, right, the, the, as best as it was, can. Irene, yeah. I mean, Irene killed that road. I tell you, that road held up better than any road done in Bethel <laughs> until I read. Well, yeah. you must yeah, there was a lot of truckloads of of yeah. that came out of there. Yeah. And, and you know, it, well, again, the way we're putting the road back this time isn't technically spec for those easel loads of consistent traffic coming out of the quarry. Um, however, it's an improvement over what we had, um, if that makes any sense. So, I mean, we would have to do probably almost double what we're doing to, to have the easel uh, load of everyday traffic coming out of there. Now, there's not everyday traffic coming out of the quarry like that, but, um, but Irene is what really killed mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And, you know, if we had thought about it at that point, we probably could have somehow gotten some monies. To, you could have that and Sand Hill. To, to done that mm -hmm. um, as a result of emergency, mm -hmm. you know, damage to the roads Both or something. Both those probably. But so the other thing we looked at was when we were talking about like the next water project, because I was like, mm, you know, you know how people love trench patching. So I'm like, I don't, please don't make me do this on Christian Hill. Well, then we looked at the schedule and, you know, when had the state of Vermont paved by the town office? And that was in the last few years. Then when had they paved, you know, Main Street? When had they paved? They're paving River Street now. So Richard and I sat down and we did ask Chris when he was picking up his pack, hey, when did you do these? Because we know one of our next projects, or one of the projects is obviously River Street. The other one is going up past South Maine. And we're like, well, we're not doing that because the state just paved. So we were talking about the next stage would be like North Main Street and out. And then, you know, I think there might be work at the at another, um, at the other reservoir. I'm trying to like, what would the next water project be? Um, and then Chris had mentioned, I guess, the state coming through in the next eight years will be doing Main Street. So maybe, um, you know, another focus will be is what we're going to do for a sidewalk project in Main Street. Because we'd obviously want to get that done before the state of Vermont came through and paved. Because again, we look like we're not sure what we're doing. You know, I, I have this brain that sometimes gets in gear and sometimes it doesn't. I was, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I woke up one night and I said, we, we don't have much, enough street. Is there a um, minimum sidewalk size? Is there I a think minimum? It's four feet, but they're moving the, towards five feet. But five if, feet if is the is the desired width of the. If you're desired. talking about Main Street, one of the proposals in the, yeah, one of the better connections suggestions is that we only have parking on one side of the street if you're talking about Main Street. Mm -hmm. Right. Is well, I'm saying, you know, if you, were, if, you, if you took the curb out and moved it over, mm -hmm. the width of the curb, four inches. Give you you, you eight, mean right on Pleasant Street? The, the, the whole street. Oh. On Main eight more <clears throat> inches, eight man. more inches of highway yeah. would make a big difference. Well, I'm not sure, to be honest, if there's a minimum. I don't know about that with the curb. My guess is there's something out there. I'd have to look. But um, one of the interesting things that they did do, that Dubois and King did, which I thought was super interesting, they measured between the buildings and said, like, this is Randolph. This is Bethel. This is, you know, <laughs> so it was really interesting. But one of their suggestions is no parking on one side of the street. And then all of a sudden you've got some driving room and it makes a little, you know, but I, I think the minimum was four feet plus the curb, but I'd have Where to double check. The parking garage. Yeah. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to find a place to park cars. Well, I'll tell you what's interesting about that is obviously part of that was what the select board already was like, mm which was blown, you know, doing out back here where we said, you guys said it was all ledge because that obviously was part of it in a second phase. But what was interesting during their um, gathering of information that Dubois and King did was asking people, how far are you willing to walk to get to the market, to get to Babes, to get to the sandwich shop? Because currently, you know, people, there's a lot of times when the municipal parking lot is empty. 
and people are you know looking on Main Street for parking. So that was interesting. They felt that that they could we could accommodate um, our existing parking needs by utilizing this better, the municipal parking lot, and then maybe doing an addition. Um, but I mean, it's all ledgy and stuff. So back the there. But so once we get the final plan, plan Du Bois and King is putting their final touches on it and then it looks like the steering committee wants to do some things to it so um it's broken down into projects so we'll have to show you the whole we'll show you the whole plan and see um but you know parking is an issue but if people are willing to walk there in burlington you really got to walk <laughs> yeah there may be plenty of parking yeah. you gotta take an people uber are just not willing so the that. the minimum and typical to have let's say if you're having side parking and sidewalks on <clears throat> both sides so um you have to five foot is your sidewalk minimum and then you usually have about six inches of curb then you have eight an eight foot parking stall 11 foot travel lane and then as you move across, you, you know, the opposite, 11 foot travel lane, eight foot parking stall, six inch curb, five foot sidewalk. So, 50, 50, so I, I know like when we had milled and paved down here, whatever it was. Before I came. Seven years ago, maybe. Must be, yeah, makes sense. Um, they wanted us to paint the parking stalls and we're like, we're not painting these because they're, they're not wide enough. You know, yeah. we'll be liable for that mm -hmm. because because they don't have the desired 38 feet width through there. That's why you know you park. I mean, everybody's parked next to the pizza place, right? Yeah. And, <laughs> and you, you, do, you move your mirror in. You, <laughs> nobody hits it for the night. There's a few cars that yeah. summer that got their mirrors enough. taken off, mm -hmm. like within it's not two wide weeks enough, time. and that's been the you know. And it's not, there's really no width to take from anywhere, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you're right up against the buildings there. And that's why the um, part of the, um, part of the options there, Lindley, remember, uh, was to have a, which wasn't desirable, but was to have parking on one side of the street, yeah. potentially through there because of that width issues. And that is and then it, they focus And then you may not have enough width for parking, but you may have width for a, what was it? What was the lane called? Like a pedestrian lane or bike lane, bike or lane. Mm -hmm. you know, a, a green space lane or something? Yeah. Like well, it. they did talk about doing that, like maybe having some restaurants have outdoor seating, and we talked about it. We're like, this is downtown, Beth. You're gonna want to be eating a sandwich while you got a diesel truck hauling through. I mean, like, that didn't seem conducive for a, a good time, but it certainly was conducive for people to have a breather. Um, and the other thing too is if the, the goal too was to make the main street buildings handicap accessible, so, um, or just accessible, then you were gonna need some additional room on one side or on more both sides. So you would definitely need to get rid of parking. If you're gonna raise it up, you'd need a ramp to get these, you know, so that people would access almost like here's the ramp on the bottom and then it goes mm -hmm. up to a second layer like they did in Virgin's. So there's a few options there, um, you know, and, and people are in favor for in concept, but would they be once you removed a lane of parking, you know, hard to know. Um, so it was, yeah, I did side think, of the street, are yeah. you going to take the parking away? Cause you're going to, I think it was kind of, yeah, it was, I, I mean, I think it was the bank side, but, yeah. um, but yeah, it was. And, um, you know, but you could also talk about was making handicap accessible parking or maybe like a drop zone for like the laundromat so that if people like could unload put their laundry and then go park you know what I mean giving people that the other option too would be to something that you don't do here is so you have um, three-hour parking so people can't park all day long on Main Street so that if you had business owners or employees they can't park in front of their business. They have to park in the parking lot. I always look at that and say, "You don't want anybody to come to your business. You park right there, I so know. you can't get anybody to come yeah, to your business." Yeah, and I'm people. Like, what? That makes no sense. I know, but people do it. So it's. Does anybody know what the requirements are for disabled spots on the five parking? Currently, we yeah, because I had um, currently we're not set up to do that because the V Trans they don't want um, their the handicapped spaces. I think were needed to be oh what did i send to the steering committee 
they, size? Yes, and they can't. They have to be. Uh, they can't be um, parallel parking. They have to be, yeah, so that was part of it too. And we just don't have the space for it, so it would be unsafe. Yeah, I, I had, I got a hold of Reed at Two Rivers who sent me to VTrans, or she went to VTrans and then she sent me back stuff. So we actually couldn't do that unless we change um, some of the, to create spacing specifically for that. And I think it would be like bulb outs and a couple things to. Oh boy, more Jarvis bulb outs. Yeah, so it, you know, it'll be interesting to see once we get there. It could be yours, Lindley, going for it. Yeah, How's that's that? right, they're Lindley's bulb outs. <laughs> um, so let's see, the road crew's gone to their <laughs> four 10 hour days. So, um, excuse me? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Lindley. You want the bulb outs? No, I was just teasing Chris right back. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I said they're Lindley's this year. Well, Lindley's now. Although there were no complaints last year, we did that. Um, so the road crew's gone to four 10 hour days. Um, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday. I have a meeting tomorrow with Rita Cito of Two Rivers to talk about the next step in our bike ped grant. And then she's meeting with Morgan and AJ to, we have a grants and age ditching project that we're gonna do on Macintosh. That is the feel that that's the worst part of the, ro of the Bethel roads for like spring and mud season. And so they do wanna use some of the ARPA money to um, do a section of that. So they're gonna work with Rita to do a scoping and getting pricing. So they have a grant for a section of it and then, um, you know, gonna look at doing some more work up there as well. A lot of money in that road. Quite a few years ago now, but that we road did, we used did to be a, impassable. I know, we did some, um, we did a bunch of culverts up there and, and uh, yeah, I, you know, it's like Morgan said, it was never built properly. So you're kind of behind the eight ball. So I can understand that. Um, so Cecil Washburn is, is working with the cemetery, you know, is working with some contractor to have some trees taken down at Cherry Hill and Gilead. And as I said, stuff is out for bid. The other thing was um, I had, uh, we got a phone call today. So the international is ready. Finally. For pickup, yes. For plowing? <laughs> yeah, for everything. Sounds about right. No. And it is, I know. I, I had assumed the two trucks would come on the same day. So they, we have a bill for $17,306 um, that we have to pay before, obviously, they're going to release the truck. The long story short was I spoke to the gentleman today, Parker, up there. He was very helpful. They end up putting in a new motor, a long block, and because it and they had to make an insurance claim because when we took the truck up, it was, we believed it was a cracked head. So they went up, they sent it out, they, they had it looked at, it was reinstalled, it, they ran it, they have their whole list of everything that they did. We drove it back, no problems, down the interstate. And then a day or two later went to use it, it overheated. So we had it flat bedded back there. And this, that time when they got through it, the block was cracked. So he said to me on the phone today, he said, look, we don't know if we missed it when it first came in, if it came with the block cracked, we don't know if we cracked it or if when, you know, he's like, there's too many ifs here. So they made an insurance claim. So I talked to Morgan about it today and he said, we have a $17,000 bill. And he was like, we have to pay that. That was work that they legitimately did. And he said, you know, it could have been worse. It could have been that we paid that bill. And then they said that the block cracked on us. We would have been paying in a $25,000 on top of that. So unfortunately, it looks like the 20,000 of ARPA that we had, we put into the capital equipment fund just found a home. So I, I guess I, some confusion. Mm -hmm. um, so originally, originally when the truck went north, yep, we had some work done to it. Yep, this work. Yep. And the bill was like 
twenty something thousand. There's some stuff that they did not. So are you us saying for. that this seventeen's on top of the twenty no. something thousand, or this is so the twenty thousand went away this and went now away. it's seventeen? Yes. Okay. I was just yeah. No. So no. I'm thinking, well, if we already paid yeah, twenty grand. No, and they want no, another we seventeen. Didn't, like we didn't pay yeah. anything because we okay. weren't sure. So we never paid the first bill. No. Okay. No. More, I, I, and actually, it was more than that. Wasn't it close to thirty or something? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was. Yeah. No. AJ. Okay. Two of them. AJ came in the next day and went to Pam and said, pull, pulled the bill. He okay. said, don't pay that because it's going back. And we flat betted it back. They did say originally they were going to charge us a part of the towing, which they didn't. And so this is the bill. I called him today and spoke to him about it. And, and he admitted, he's like, we just don't know. So we made an insurance claim. So I asked, so Morgan's like, we have to look at it in the case of they, we could have bought a new motor on top of spending the 17000 And he's like, so. Well, a new motor would have cost more than 17000 it, it would have we cost, would have he, said, he said 25. I asked the gentleman today, I said, how much was the long block? He said 20. He said, look, any part, part of it, he said, we did take from your existing truck and move over. And about five, he said it'd be about 5000 in labor. But yeah, there was some, so the original bill, this is now our bill. So I was like, okay. It's not pretty. <laughs> well, it's, it's reasonable considering yeah. Yeah. where it started. So. And, and the fact is we, we don't know. And he admitted the same thing. And so he made the claim. So that was, that's not the truck that we were trading though, right? No, that's the, the freight truck we were trading is the one that had the computer issues. Yes. That thing. It's just okay. sitting. So the freight liner is still here. I, I had said we'd get the international and the Western star on the same day. That's I'm like, this is, and do we have an ETA on the new truck coming? May no it, it has been different months, but it is okay. May. February. So oh, it was originally, I think it was like January, yeah. then it was February. And, um, but was interesting enough was, um, AJ and Morgan have been working to get estimates to sit down. I had told him what Chris had said at one of the meetings. I'm like, look, we need to go through the equipment schedule again because in the last two years, equipment prices have gone through the roof. So we know our our capital equipment schedule is, is off. So they've been making phone calls and AJ is like, wow you know, some of the pricing. But what is interesting is we were we were told a few months ago that we needed to order a truck to be two years out. And I said, three, because look how long it's taken us to get this one. Now they're saying actually that it's only going to be like 18 months, two years, or 18 months, or so that it's the faster turnaround. But I'm not sure. It's interesting, because some things are just really hard to, to find. So. But if we order them, we don't have to accept it. We could pass when it got here. But oh yeah, because so if it's eighteen months ago, someone will take that truck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So when the equipment committee meets, um, Morgan and AJ are working on updating with current pricing uh, the equipment schedule, moving it around is more practical. They're having oil samples done on the loader and the excavator to see what's going on there and as well as um, coming up with um, you know make I asked them to make a full list of everything that was wrong with the equipment that we had because then when the equipment committee sits down and they're also can you know go through and check everything that we're you know coming up with a better so better situation because at some point I'd figured these would be down payments. We're not going to be able to buy a loader, a grader, a you know. At some point there may be a loan in the future, but and some of it may just be down payments, and then it's less of a loan. But so I'm really anxious for that meeting. I'm hoping to do it in May, or early June, and then we'll have a really comprehensive plan for the select board um, with some better numbers. But the pricing, AJ was like, wow, <laughs> it's just gone just gone crazy, I think, some of the pricing. So anyway, so we will be needed to take that money, obviously, out of um, a capital equipment fund. So what else? Green Up is Saturday, May 6th. So, and there's bags at the town office if you are interested um, in picking some up, and there'll be somebody at the um, park as well. Is that is it? Select board meeting minutes from the tenth. Uh, they still have the word agenda in the. Oh. 
I don't catch that. When you, yeah, I don't catch it when you send it over. I, you know, honestly, I don't even think I look. I just like it's the right date, and then all right, I'll draw a line through it. Hang on. Hang on, I gotta find him. Oh. Do we need a motion to accept the um, Teresa's report? Mine? No. Okay. Town manager one? No. Okay. So. You just take that for granted. <laughs> <laughs> take it for granted. It's called, it's called the plausible it's deniability. Well, yeah, it's all yeah. fake. Yeah. Could yeah. you read this better, Dave? I tried to lay in the draft yep. color. Yep. Okay. Much better. All right, good. Was there anything else in there? Or is that it? Yeah, I just wanted to know if there's any other mistakes. So just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And other communications, the energy committee had something in there, conservation and Rec committee, I believe, was all um, in there. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Any other business to come before the board? Just a reminder that the select board meeting, the next one is Monday, May 15th, in lieu of the Monday, May 8th. So we'll do two back to back. And again, I appreciate you doing that since I'm going to be on vacation. It'll be easier this way. Okay. All righty. If there's anything, there's nothing in the chat. All right. So just, just before we close, just to make sure you don't get any credit for this early close. Oh boy. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw it. I was like, boy, Dave Eddie's gonna be so happy. Actually, actually, it's one of the reasons I added the fair and impartial because I'm like, we actually have time. Because some of our agendas, I'm like, I've had those for a couple months and I haven't dared to add them because I'm like, we're gonna be here all night. So, oh, the other thing I should say is that um, our attorney, the town's attorney, is working with Brian's attorney to set up an appointment for Chris and I and our attorney, David Rue, to meet with him and his attorney. Um, we're hoping to do that in May. So we gave them the parameters of time frames. We're just waiting to hear back. I better hurry up. The dates are going to run by here. I know. So I haven't heard anything from Dave yet. And um, we had given him some dates and basically said sometime between 9 and noon. So um, obviously hoping it doesn't take the whole 9 to noon, but just that's the parameters. <laughs> well, it depends. We couldn't do afternoons. No, don't need That we couldn't do afternoons. So um, as soon as that, obviously, we can make any decisions, but we will come back and inform you and talk to you about it. So, Did we set a date? What? The Whatever we were going to do on uh, right, right, right road. road. Actually not going to do. I have contacted, um, I reached out to the grant tour and asked, I just said, there's too many conflicts right now. We have possible oh. pending issues. What happens? And I postponed the grant. I can take it, uh, the same project in October, which would be already awarded to the same people, or we can, I can pass on it completely. And we could do some of the work, grading, clean out under the ditches on the opposite side of the road. And there is an exemption in the municipal roads general permit, the MRGP, that if we had a conflict with the landowner, that there is an exemption that's saying that we do not have to do that hydrologically connected segment if there was oh. an issue. Hmm. So that's hopefully not the case, but with the situation we're in currently, it didn't seem like it would be an effective or possibly successful project if um, one of the participants was opposed now. So the, um, I haven't been up this spring. I went up last fall up Gilead Road. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Andrew is going to need that road soon. The Gilead portion that we're talking about working yeah. on? Yeah, he, we talked to him and he told us that he would um, he told us that he would let us know when it kind of dried out so that we could get up there so we could be in there before Kinsley. I've already talked about Morgan with it and went through it with him. And so um, that was, so that's on Morgan's radar. And Andrew said he'd let us know when it dried out up there as it's still pretty wet. Um, so. A couple more weeks. Yeah, so we're, we're yeah, prepared. After, after this weekend, I, uh, moving some stumps from my property to my brother's property. I Did they just the guy, pop right out of the car? The, no, they didn't just no. pop out of the car. Uh, I told the truck driver, just take it up here and go out this road and go across the top of the field. It's always dry. Mm -hmm. 
Dave, I'm stuck. Oh boy, Matt. I drove up there. I drove up there Friday with my tractor. Maybe well, he's ten thousand pounds. Didn't make a mark. Mm -hmm. He goes up there with a eight thousand pound truck and. Well, it's funny because it's so dry. Not up there, it isn't. But yeah. Whew. So it's pretty waterlogged now. Yeah. So Andrew said he'd let us know when it, you know, when it dried out a little bit up there, and um, and Morgan is fully briefed on the project and knows what needs to happen. So it was fine. So no. So we're gonna pass on that. We pass on that railroad grant for now. Oh boy. It just seemed like the right thing to do. I think it was gonna be. I'm just kind of looking for that for that chapter to I know. be close. But yeah, so but it doesn't mean we can't redo it. I can reapply in October once some things have been sorted out with the rest of Ray Road. So. All right. Anything else to come before the board? Do we need to do anything about the planning commission setting that up with the select board, or no, that'll be another time? No, we're going to have to do that in. Um, it said in the rules right here, I think. Yeah, I was looking for the, that afterwards. Yeah, that we, that the select, yeah, that the select board, it's kind of funny. The select board can't warn the hearing less than 15 days after they got it, and they're just basically getting it. So on, on our okay. May 15th meeting, we'll warn the public hearing for June okay. 12th. So it, it's one of those, I printed it out and put it in it because it's just weird. I'm like, we were thinking we could just boom, boom, no can do. But I am going to email it to the, I gave Denise a hard copy, Chris a hard copy. I will email the rest of you the most recent zoning file. So it's going to look like this. It's going to have the markup version of April 20th, 2023. And you'll be able to see we made a few changes at the PC the other night. But the nice thing is the document is colored so you can see where we have made any changes. If mm -hmm. it's all regular, then we didn't touch it. So um, I did just get tonight before I came a quote from Two Rivers to update our town plan um, and it's $11,000 and we don't have a municipal planning grant. So the last time we did it, we did have a planning grant, but we don't now. So that may be something that we use some of the contracted services money for out of July budget because we're going to start in September. I um, guess we'll have to, Rick Benson and I are going to meet when I get back from vacation and go through their estimate and see if there's anything that we could do on the PC to alleviate some of the um, cost. But it's difficult because they know all the state statutes. They review all that. And so it's a little bit easier for them. And also to have them manage the document because as Denise can attest, part way through this, I had to manage the rezoning document. And I, I, I'm just, I can't do that. It's, it's too much. Um, so, you know, we need to move forward with the update. Um, and 11,000 seems like a lot, but when you look at the breakdown, it's a lot of work on their end. So, but Rick and I'll remove that, review it in May, and I'll have more information for you then. But that process won't start until September. The planning commission is gonna take the summer off. So um, they'll come to your um, public hearing in June, but we're just, we're not going to meet for a little bit. So it's been kind of a process <laughs> to get through the zoning regs. So anyway, so I will email the rest of the select board the most updated so version. One more little yeah. Little um, they've, they've selected a date for the uh, celebration of life for Davis and Victoria. Yep, we received a request today if we would share it on our website, okay. and which we said absolutely we would do. We did that for okay. certainly for Tim Mills, and we did that for um, Carl. Um, so yeah, so they did ask that. So where is that going to be? I think it's going to be here. I wasn't sure. Kelly didn't say. She just asked if we could share their celebration of life announcement on the website. It's like, absolutely. Yep. So. All right, and then. Um, Jean came in, so Window Dressers wants to use the town hall for a period of time in November. So we're gonna reschedule. We will move our select board meeting one night. So we could either maybe do it at the fire department if they're not meeting, it might be a good opportunity to go to another building. We could do it at the town office. So one meeting in November we will do on location. So we'll do someplace different. When so is that? November, I don't know, it's like 9th? Yeah. 9 to 16. Yeah, so one of the select board meetings. So if the fire department doesn't have a 
their meeting that night, it might be a good time to do it there. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt to visit other buildings. I think, you know, maybe even one time we could do it at the rec area, just to kind of, you know, if you don't ever have the time to walk through these things. So, something to think about, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but we'll either probably do it in the town office or the fire department, so. All right. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second.